everyone. My name's Stasia Babicki, and I love frogs. Ever since I was little, I would play with frogs. Outside, at my house, at a pond, at school, anywhere I possibly could. One of my favorite childhood memories was going outside in the rain during the summertime with my dad and catching frogs. Last summer, I went to Nicaragua. Nicaragua is the largest country in Central America with borders on the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean. I went to Nicaragua to volunteer, to learn Spanish, and to learn about the culture with the perk of being in one of the most biodiverse areas in the world. I was hoping to see lots of wildlife, especially a lot of frogs. Nicaragua is also approximately the size of New York State. To my surprise, I didn't see very many. I started to ask around. Some people looked at me as if I was crazy. Why does this little girl want to catch a bunch of frogs? Others tried to help me, saying that it was probably just a slow year and that frogs would come out eventually. Some said I was looking in the wrong places. Now hearing this, I was thinking, hmm, well, I know frogs pretty well. I should be able to find some, especially in Nicaragua, because they should be so abundant. I finally spoke with my two now mentors, Plot and Rick, and they told me that frogs aren't the only species that has been having trouble recently. Animals like bear tapers, iguanas, sloths, quetzals, trigolos, capuchin monkeys, armadillos, scarlet macaws, and many more beautiful animals were leaving, becoming endangered, or disappearing. Why was this happening? Why is it that all of a sudden these beautiful animals were becoming endangered and extinct or fleeing away? Before I answer that question, I'm going to talk about trees and the importance they have to the environment. Recently in Nicaragua, there has been a huge problem with deforestation. Carpenters from all over the world are coming to Nicaragua. They're coming from many countries like the United States and Canada for in search of valuable hardwood trees. What they do is they scope out properties looking for the trees they would like. Once they find them, they go up to the property owners, asking, giving them a good price on the tree and bringing their own supplies and everything. The reason why the Nicaraguans allow this to happen is, first of all, it's a good amount of money, almost so much that they can't really pass up the offer. Secondly, since trees have always grown, why won't trees grow again? Nicaragua has 65 different commercially valuable species of trees. Trees like cedar, mahogany, rosewood, and pine. There is a history of abuse by timber companies. In 1998, the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources declared a five-year moratorium on the harvesting of cedar and mahogany. This could only do so much. Approximately 70 to 80,000 hectares of, year, of forest per year are cut down due to unregulated and illegal logging. To put this into, uh, one hectare is approximately 2.5 acres. To put this into perspective, Solbury School is 90 acres, meaning around 36 hectares, give or take. Every year, it would take approximately 2,200 Solbury School properties to, to meet the supply and demand of carpenters. Deforestation is horrible for the environment. It's causing many bad things to happen like species depletion, extinction, pollution, everything else, and everything along the line. A lot of these trees are what people would call a keystone species. A keystone species is a species that creates environmental harmony and supports the life of many other species that live in the area. Without a keystone species, two things happen. The first is that a species will fill the niche of the species that is being extinct or endangered and it will overpopulate. An example of this is mosquitoes in a field where there isn't anything living there anymore. The second example is animals will start to become endangered, die out, and flee to areas where they don't belong, causing problems for other environments. Balance is key in nature. Balance is biodiversity. Without biodiversity, ecosystems struggle to thrive, and many horrible things can happen. I'm sure all of you are familiar with the children's book, The Lorax, by Dr. Seuss, a book that teaches kids the importance of the environment. It shows that when trees get cut down, um, pollution comes crawling in along with extinction. With one tree gone, it can make the biggest difference. 
Now that I've said all these depressing things, why does this matter? Who cares about slimy old frogs anyways, right? Who needs mahogany trees, right? Wrong. If frogs become extinct, there will be many more insects crawling around. Mosquitoes, spiders, insects and arachnids that we really don't like. It will cause the ecosystems in which these frogs live in to alter, to become different, and that's not really good. If trees become extinct or endangered, there will be less shade. Farm crops will be altered because of the pollution. Artisans will be hard to make because the people who live in these breathtaking areas, their livelihood will be destroyed along with the circle of life. Right now, I'm focusing, I'm creating a project in the area of La Concha, Nicaragua, that helps families um, and educates them on the awareness of the importance of trees. My idea is to give to found, find families with a little bit of extra land and give them and plant an endangered tree in their backyard. By doing this, a few things will happen. The first is I will pay the family a monthly stipend, giving them a little bit of extra income and a little bit of uh, positive reinforcement to tell their friends about all of the good environment, all of the good things that come along with saving trees. Secondly, the tree itself will start to grow, and after time, it will have seeds, and the seeds will be spread out and flourish, and and hopefully, will there will be more saplings and a lot more of these endangered trees, making them not endangered. And after that, animals will come back to the area, causing the level of biodiversity to be almost what it used to be, and hopefully what it used to be. Because I'm doing this project doesn't mean that people, other people can't do little things to help. Everyone can make a difference. There's little things in everyday life that people can do to help the environment and to help trees, but like buying shade-grown coffee. It tastes exactly the same, and by, ba and by buying shade-grown coffee, it allows coffee plants to be grown in forest areas so that trees don't need to be cut down. Conserve water. I know this might sound silly, but it really helps the environment. Um, re use reusable water bottles and shopping bags so that plastic doesn't have to be wasted. Conserve energy. If you're warm, Open a window, and if you're cold, put on a sweater so that air conditioning and heating units don't need to be used all the time. Educate your friends on the importance of the environment and the importance of trees. You can never say too much. There is an old African proverb that states, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Do it for the frogs, do it for the trees, do it for the breathtaking animals that live in these beautiful places. Make a difference because you can, and every little thing counts. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. Dr. Seuss, thank you.